Parkinson's disease is a type of neurodegenerative disease that affects the movement along with the ability to perform your daily activity. This disorder most commonly occurs with advancing age, although the factors causing this are still undetermined. Hi, I'm Dr. Lakshmi and you're watching The Health Talk Session by Yashoda Hospitals. So let's know more about Parkinson's disease and joining our discussion today is Dr. Sai Satish, consultant neurophysician from Yashoda Hospitals, Sikindrabad. Welcome to the program, doctor. Hello, ma'am. So, doctor, Parkinson's disease is still an undetermined condition in India due to lack of scientific evidence. So, to begin with, could you briefly explain to us what exactly do we mean by Parkinson's disease or Parkinsonism? Whenever a person has uh, slowness in their activities, tremulousness in their hands or legs, and when they, we have difficulty in managing the posture and they have tendency to fall, we call this set of symptoms as Parkinsonism. As, we, uh, as all uh, people believe, Parkinsonism and Parkinson's disease is not one and the same. The conglomeration of these symptoms is called as Parkinsonism and Parkinsonism is, can be caused by Parkinson's disease which we call as typical Parkinsonism and also can caused by atypical Parkinsonism or Parkinson's plus syndromes like progressive supranuclear palsy, corticobasal syndrome, multiple system atrophy, etc. So Parkinson's disease is a progressive disorder affecting the movements and due to the complexity of this disease, each person suffers differently. So can you briefly explain to us what the symptoms are for this disorder? So Parkinsonism is characterized by a tremor. It is like shaking of hands. It could affect legs and the jaw tremor. And it also is characterized by slowness in all their activities like eating, bathing, especially while walking. And they also have difficulty in managing the balance while they are walking. So they have this tendency to fall. So these are the few common symptoms which we actually see. So these are more of motor phenomenon. We also tend to see some non-motor phenomenon in Parkinson's as well. But these usually are retrospectively seen rather than prospectively. In the sense, when the person comes with features of Parkinsonism, in retrospective, when we ask them, they might have a decrease in uh, ability to smell things. They might have constipation. They have uh, what we call as REM sleep behavior disorders where they keep uh, enacting their dreams, like shouting in their dreams, moving their hands and legs vigorously. So commonly what we find is a rest tremor, a rigidity, that stiffness of the body, and slowness in all their activities, and also difficulty in managing the balance while they're walking. So as this disease occurs with advancing age doctor, what are the causes or risk factors that are associated with this condition? Parkinsonism or Parkinson's disease uh, do not have exactly any reason for it to occur. Majority of times it is idiopathic. However, in few people, the genetic factors play a role. We, f we do see uh, people with family history of Parkinsonism having these uh, symptoms early on. And we, there is some entity called as uh, uh, secondary Parkinsonism where we can actually find a cause for this Parkinson's symptoms to appear like drug-induced Parkinsonism or post-traumatic Parkinsonism. So as discussed earlier, doctor, that Parkinson's disease affects mainly the movements and the ability to perform the daily activities becomes difficult. So what are the treatments that are available for the patients to ease the symptoms, doctor? People come with uh, Parkinson's. Uh, with um, people come with uh, symptoms of Parkinsonism. One to know what exactly is the cause, whether are we dealing with Parkinsonism or not, and second to decide whether they have to start treatment early on. And coming to the diagnosis, Parkinsonism is predominantly a clinical diagnosis, and what are other relevant investigation which we do is only to rule out all the secondary causes of Parkinsonism. And it's not essential that each and every person who presents with Parkinsonism are started with the treatment straight away. Only at the stage where these Parkinsonian symptoms actually affects one person's personal, social or professional life, that is the time where we each actually start treatment. And coming to the modalities of treatment, Parkinson's treatment can be treated with medications, what we call as medical management, 
and we also have an advanced treatment called as deep brain stimulation where we can actually help to bring down the symptoms of Parkinsonism and make the people uh, life more comfortable. So once we start the treatment for Parkinson's disease, what are the important aspects that one needs to keep in their mind, doctor? Yeah, first and foremost, important thing is uh, we need to see how are the symptoms and when are the symptoms improving after giving a medication. So what happens is when we give a dose of levodopa and the tremor comes down after a certain time, like something like a switching on, switching on a button. So this onset of effect after the tablet has been given is called as on phenomenon. And this effect is going to last for some time, which we call as duration of on. After the effect of the medication fades away, then the symptoms of Parkinsonism resurface as though the switch has been off and the symptoms reappear. This is called as on and off phenomenon. And this, when we see, we uh, diagnose the person with uh, Parkinson's disease to have motor fluctuations. So discussing about the treatment, doctor, do medications cure the disease or just the symptoms? Uh, Parkinson's disease is a, such a kind of entity, uh, which is a degenerative disorder wherein the symptoms gradually progresses as one individual ages. So unfortunately, we do not have any medication to stop this progression. However, we have good medications to uh, relieve of their symptoms and make their life better. So what I meant to say is we do not have any medications to stop the progression. However, we have medications and uh, modalities to make the life almost normal. So you've mentioned about DBS, that is deep brain stimulation, doctor. So could you elaborate on this, please? Deep brain stimulation is considered as a boon to people with Parkinsonism, especially people with Parkinson's disease. So there is a stage where the people with Parkinsonism, they have significant uh, involuntary movements while they have good benefit of, of the medications. And the times when they, are, they do not have this effect, which we call as off time, they are so disabled that they are bed bound. So one, one person tends to enter this stage of motor fluctuations and on-time dyskinesias five or six years after the treatment has been started. So deep brain stimulation in this time, in, this, in such kind of individuals, helps to uh, smoothen out these motor fluctuations and prevent dyskinesias and helps the people with Parkinson's to have near normal life. So it's now time to bust few myths and know the fact. Taking the first one, Parkinson's disease affects only about 65 years of age. Yeah, as we know, Parkinson's is a degenerative condition and is commonly seen in individuals after 50 or 60 years of age. However, we do come across individuals who have these Parkinson's symptoms early on, especially 40 years and younger people as well. When these Parkinson's symptoms are seen in uh, uh, teenagers, they are called as juvenile onset Parkinsonism. And in people less than 40 years, we call it as young onset Parkinsonism. As opposed to individuals who are elderly, where we commonly see idiopathic Parkinsonism, familial Parkinsonism is commonly seen in younger individuals, and there might be secondary cause of Parkinsonism like Wilson's disease in juvenile Parkinsonism. Taking the next one, men are more affected than female in Parkinson's disease. Yeah, though the frequency of uh, symptoms are commonly seen in men and women, Though we know like men are commonly affected than women with Parkinsonism, uh, however, there is no specific reason for, why, for which uh, it has to happen. However, rather than more than its frequency, uh, more important is how do we uh, diagnose it, how we manage the, men, uh, the disease entity. This diet has to do anything with Parkinson's disease, doctor? So, there is no specific diet uh, by which uh, the Parkinson's symptoms might worsen or they might improve. However, coming to the dietary aspect in relation to Parkinson's disease management, the one and most important thing is we need to space the medications along, uh, space the medication with the food to derive its full benefit. Do people with high IQ, are there high risk for developing Parkinson's disease, doctor? People with high IQ and Parkinson's, there is uh, no correlation as such because we see people even with uh, low IQ or low uh, economic status or low uh, um, educational qualification uh, affecting with Parkinsonism almost equally. So doctor, I'm sure you've treated many patients with Parkinson's disease. 
So what has been the most satisfying part to treat someone or to cure someone with this disorder doctor? Yeah, the most satisfying thing about managing patients with Parkinson's is then once we diagnose this and uh, prescribe appropriate medications and if they can understand how they have to take the medications properly, I think they can have almost near normal life as any other normal individual. So this management of symptoms appropriately would boost their confidence in their um, a life as a whole. So it can be devastating for someone to live with Parkinson's disease as this disorder progresses and can be erratic. So as this disease progresses, the role of a caregiver evolves. So what is the significance of this role, doctor? Yeah, uh, people with uh, uh, Parkinsonism or in fact any other degenerative diseases, they tend to worsen with age. However, uh, they can manage reasonably well if they have uh, man uh, they are given the medications appropriate time and if they are actively involved in uh, physical activities like um, cycling, jogging and dancing also. And uh, management of Parkinson is not only about medications and uh, physiotherapy, however it's like a, a whole team effort where in the family also plays a large role. It plays a large role in boosting their confidence and uh, saying that they are around when they are needed. And this moral boost helps in a long way in managing the people with Parkinson's disease. So before we wrap up this episode, Doctor, what message you would like to give to our audience out there as far as Parkinson's disease is concerned? Yeah, my message to all people with Parkinson's is we, we have a good symptomatic treatment to that. We need not bow down to whatever challenges our life throws to us. We are there to help you out and make your life better. So thank you, Doctor. It was wonderful having you here on our program today. Thank you. So this brings us to the end of this episode. Hope this episode was informative on the topic Parkinson's disease. And don't forget to join us for next week as well. Until then, take care and stay healthy. Thank you.